nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I can't find nobody. I can't find nobody. I can't find nobody. I can't find nobody. 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 Put those hands together. I've been running for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired. I've been running for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired. I've been running for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired. I've been running for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired. I've been preaching for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired. I've been preaching for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. No, I'm not tired. I'm not tired. No, I'm not tired. I'm not tired. Yet. Put those hands together.
been running for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired. I've been running for Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired. Come on, all over the house, let us stand and give God some praise. I'm not tired yet. I'm not tired yet. Come on, give him your best praise. We lift you up, Lord. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm not tired. I'm not tired. Been running with Jesus for a long time. I'm not tired. Through the rain, through the storms, on good days, on bad days. Tell your neighbor I'm not tired. Hallelujah. We give honor. Remain standing. Take your Bibles in your hand. Turn to Matthew chapter 14. As you're turning, we are giving glory and honor to the spirit of the Lord that is in this place. I can't think of any other place that I'd rather be in taking out the old year 2022 and bringing in the new year with the people of God. Hallelujah. So we give honor to God realizing that it is in him that we live and move and have our being knowing that without him we can do nothing. We give honor to the spirit of the Lord that is in this place, to my little brother, District Elder Carlos Morris, and to Lady Morris. Come on, make some noise for your pastor. Thank you, Jesus. To all of my fellow laborers in the gospel, amen. To the deaconess and to the deacons, to the people of God here at Greater Bethel, this is my home. Hallelujah. And so we feel very much at home. And we're going to try to take us up to 12 o'clock. And if we're not done by 12, we'll just shut it down and we're going to pray the old year out and pray the new year in. Is that all right? Hallelujah. If you are in Matthews chapter 14, beginning at verse 22, 
You might want to take note that it is also mentioned in Mark chapter 6, verses 45 through 21, and John chapter 6, verses 16 through 21. If you hear at Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, let me hear you say amen. Amen. <clears throat> And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship to go before him unto the other side. And if you notice in Mark 6.45 that the other side was Bethesda. That was their destiny. But how many know that for us, the other side is where? Is heaven. He said, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. And if you would take note again that in John chapter 6, verse 19, he brings out that they had rolled about five or 20, five, 25 or 30 forlongs, which is about three or four miles. And so by this time, the ship was tossed with waves for the wind was contrary. Verse 25 says, and in the fourth watch of the night, and understand that the Jews at this time divided the night into four watches. The first watch was from 6 o'clock in the evening until 9 p.m. The second watch was from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. And the third watch was from 12 a.m. till 3 a.m. And the fourth watch was from 3 a.m. until 6 a.m. So it was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. that Jesus went unto them walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, somebody say immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. And when they were all in the ship, came and worshiped him, saying of a truth, thou art the Son of God. I want you to notice back in verse number 34, 32. And when they were all coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Just for the next few minutes, I want you to remember this thought. And you can share it by looking at someone and tell them, I am a storm survivor. Tell somebody again, I am 
a storm survivor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are humble behind this sacred desk, knowing that you have given us this opportunity to minister your word to your people. And I pray, Lord God, that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. As we minister to your people, this last sermon of 2022, let it rest in their hearts. Let it encourage them. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am a storm survivor. There is an old cliche that says, we may have all come here on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. This cliche also applies to us who are sitting here in the house of God under the sound of my voice. And I'm sure many of you can remember, like I remember when I first got saved, how everything was just beautiful. And every day with Jesus was sweeter than the day before. It was smooth sailing. Nothing could go wrong. How many remember that? When you first got saved, you didn't want to step on an ant. Oh, you was just so glad to be in the number of God. And when, it, when you got the Holy Ghost, you began to sail out on that boat of sanctification and holiness. And even though when you begin, the winds were calm and the sun was shining and everything was just fine. It was smooth sailing. And every day again was just so beautiful. Can somebody say amen? But if, if as you kept on sailing, you would sooner or later find out that just because you are in Christ, you are not exempted from the storms of life. Now, whether you are in the world or whether you are in Christ, you are going to have to deal with the storms of life. Since this is an unavoidable truth, how many of you here would admit that I've got to go through, and since I've got to go through, I'd rather go through my storm with Jesus than go through my storm without Jesus? If you're going to go through the storm, there are three categories of storms that all of us will experience and for just one or two reasons. One, you are either headed towards a storm or number two, you just came out of a storm or number three, you are in a storm right now. Th there are two reasons that you are going to be in one of these three storms. The first reason is because you are trying to be obedient to the word of God. And the, the second one is a storm of disobedience. Mm -hmm. And if you notice here in the word of God in Genesis, can I take my time? I'll take my time and hurry. Is that all right? In Genesis, notice, if you will, Noah was obedient to God and he built an ark. 
And Noah was not building the ark for God because God wasn't going to drown, Noah was. And because of this fact, Notice the surrounding circumstances and situation that it brought Noah in. Noah was instructed by God to build an ark big enough to carry a zoo of animals, and he had to have enough food for both the animals, his family, and everyone else that was on that ark. He built this ark without the assistance of man's ingenuity, didn't have any machinery to help him. He didn't have any blueprint. He didn't have any kind of assistance other than the word of God. It was the hand of God that was assisting Noah, which is why the psalmist says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Notice this point, because in building this ark out of obedience, it continues to show us in Genesis chapter 7, verse number 16, that it says that, with, that they that went in were male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. I'm here to tell somebody that when the Lord shuts you in holiness and sanctification, you cannot get out. When the Lord shuts you in his house, he puts you into a place where you are in a position that regardless of what's going on on the outside, I don't want to go out there, I'm shut in. Tell somebody, I'm shut in. I'm shut in, and if you notice in the word of God, you will see that in the ark, it was noisy, it was messy, it smelled, and even though it was family, families in, under the same roof at times will get on with another nerve. Can somebody say amen? amen? This is a characteristic that we also see in the church because the same thing is happening in the house of God. It gets messy in here. Uh-huh. It gets loud. Uh-huh. Folks start to get on your nerves. Uh-huh. And if you don't believe it, just check the list that Paul gave us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 9. Because he gives of a list of things that all of us are dealing with. But notice he says in verse number 11, as such were some of you. But ye are washed. How many know, thank God, you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb? And he said, you've been sanctified by his blood. And, and you have been justified in the name of the Lord. And so the advice I give you tonight, that in spite of what's going on in the house of God, you have to stay in the house. <laughs> Tell somebody, stay in the house. No matter what's going on, stay in the house. I know it's going to get a little messy, and I know people are going to talk about you and lie on you and say all kinds of things about you, but no matter what you're going through, stay in the house of God. Stay in here because in here there's protection, and in here there's safety, and regardless of the storm that's on the outside, you are in the hand of the Lord, so clap your your hands and tell your neighbor, stay in the house. Notice that when you stay in the house, like the ark, that even though there's a storm, you have to realize that the ark, because of the storm, as the water comes down, it's going to lift the ark up which is an indication that as long as you stay in the house, 
uh, regardless of what's going on uh, on the outside, the spirit of the Lord will lift you up uh, as long as you stay in the house. <laughs> Uh, I'm starting to feel a loose here now. Uh, in spite of the storm, uh, uh, you're going to go higher. And once we go higher, you have to understand that, that in spite of what's going on on the outside, uh, regardless of what the enemy is doing, uh, you have to realize that no weapon uh, formed against us is going uh, to prosper. But you have to stay in the house. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm not going nowhere. My, my heart is fixed and uh, my mind is made up uh, that in spite of what's going on in this house, uh, you can talk about me if you want to, uh, but I'm going to stay in the house. Uh, oh, come on and clap your hands and give God some praise. Uh, notice now, because Noah was going uh, through a storm with his family, but he decided and made up his mind that in spite of the storm, uh, I'm going to go through. Notice now there is a storm of disobedience. That is seen in the book of Jonah because he didn't want to listen to God. And because he didn't want to listen to God, he ended up in a storm of disobedience. And this is seen, of course, in Jonah chapter number one. Because he disobeys God's word, he ended up going down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tashis. And notice, if you will, in verse number three, it says that because of the direction that he was going, he was going away from the presence of the Lord. When you are out of the will of God and you decide to go away from his presence, you are going to find out that the enemy will provide people, places, and things uh, to accommodate your disobedience uh, and keep you going down uh, and outside of the will uh, and the word of God. Uh, so then Jonah didn't want to do the will of God. And, and Jonah is in a boat. And uh, notice, if you will, that because he's in this boat, that the storm arises. And the word of God says that the mariners uh, started to call on their false gods. And uh, they were doing this while Jonah was down at the bottom of the ship sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's just how it is when you're out of the will of the Lord. Uh, you, don't, you don't let nothing bother you because you're trying to be comfortable. Uh, they're not doing the will of God. And because of this, they decided they were going to cast lots to find out why, what is the reason why we are in this situation. And the Bible said that the lots landed on Jonah. So they went down there, and you know how it was, Jonah down there sleep. And let me just give this as a little input because uh, uh, sometimes we can be like those uh, that are uh, that are that are experiencing what the marinas were experiencing. Uh, in other words, here you are trying to stay afloat. Uh, you're going to work every day, and uh, you're trying to make ends meet, and you're trying to get the bills paid, and and, and you might be working two jobs and, and and doing everything you can. But here is somebody in your house that ain't going nowhere trying to find a job to help you meet the bills. Uh, while you at work, they at home sleep. Uh, they at home and not even worried about what you're doing. Uh, and you're trying to do everything to lighten the load. Uh, but here's my advice to you. Uh, while that Negro is downstairs sleeping, uh, you need to tell him, look, you're going to get up and get a job uh, or you got to get out because uh, if I'm going to do bad, I'm going to do bad bad uh, all by myself. Can somebody say amen? Uh, so they said, look here, Jonah, you're the reason why we can't make it. And they threw Jonah 
overboard, and the Bible says that a great fish swallowed him. In chapter number two, notice now, Jonah prays a prayer of repentance, uh, and the Lord tells the fish, okay, let him up, let him out, uh, because he has repented. When he's down in that belly's mouth, in the belly's gut. Notice now it ain't, it ain't like he on a summer trip. Huh? Uh, it's dark down there and it stinks down there. Uh, don't think that when you are out of the will of God uh, that God is going to put you in a place to make you feel comfortable about your disobedience. Uh, he's going to put you in a place where it's dark. You can't see where you're going. Uh, you don't know what whether you're up or out or down uh, and he's going to make sure that what you're going through, you got to repent. Can somebody say amen? So now in chapter number three, Jonah now being in obedience to the word of the Lord, he goes to Nineveh and preaches repentance and the word of God delivers that city from the evil that they were doing. Now, here we are in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 14, uh, verse 22. And Jesus constrains the disciples uh, to get into a ship to go over to the other side uh, while he sends the multitude away. Uh, now the disciples because they were being obedient to the word of the Lord uh, the Bible says that they got in the boat uh, and they begin to sail uh, and as it seems it's, they started out smooth sailing uh, uh, but how many of you know that when you start out with the Lord uh, it might be smooth sailing uh, but just stay in here for a while uh, because now notice he said that, uh, th that while they were in the midst of the sea, and again John brings it out in John 6, 19, uh, that they sailed about 25 or 30 furlongs, uh, uh, about three or four or five miles out, uh, uh, and the winds were contrary. Uh, notice now because you have to understand and see that the winds that are contrary is the spirit of the enemy. Because if you notice now, Paul points out and identifies it. When you look at Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 2, uh, he identifies this contrary wind uh, as the prince and the power of the air. Uh, now, you may be wondering and you may be saying to yourself, uh, because I'm like, this, I'm like these disciples, uh, I, I'm trying to walk with God and I'm trying to be in his will. Uh, and every time I'm trying to do the will, I get out a little further. Uh, and I notice now that while I'm on this journey, uh, I made up in my mind. How many of you have made up in your mind? Uh, that if I start out with Jesus, uh, I made up in my mind I'm not going back. Uh, my mother may go back. Uh, my father may go back. Uh, but I'm shut in uh, and I can't go back. Uh, oh, clap your hands and give God some praise. Uh, notice now here because uh, when the enemy sees that you are gone out too far uh, and you can't go back, uh, you are obedient and you're made up in your mind uh, like the disciples that are rowing uh, you are in this thing you're getting tired uh, frustrated and uh, you're a little nervous uh, but look at somebody and tell them don't get nervous uh, uh, just hold on to God's uh, unchanging hands uh, notice now here because uh, when you're in the will of God that you'll start to wonder why is it uh, that I'm going through what I'm going through. Uh, I'm trying to do the will of God. Uh, I'm here at church every time the doors open. Uh, I'm faithful paying my tithes. Uh, I'm trying to be faithful in uh, whatever the, the, the word assigns me to do. Uh, I'm here in the choir. I'm on the praise team. Uh, I'm dear for Bible study. Uh, I'm trying not to miss being in the house of God. 
God. If you ask my members, they would tell you, I'm a, I'm a faithful member. I'm here every day. I read my Bible, and I'm trying to be a doer of the word. Hallelujah. How many know what I'm talking about? How many can relate? You're doing everything you know to do. But here, you're still in a storm that you didn't expect and didn't start out with. And here's the kicker. You look out of the corner of your eye. Uh, across the street at your neighbor uh, and here they are they ain't going to nobody's church uh, they ain't praising nobody's God uh, they out in the streets uh, they going to the club uh, they partying on Friday uh, and on Sunday they at the ball game uh, cutting the grass uh, or washing the car uh, ASAP said it good best uh, in, in chapter number 7 73, uh, he said, but as for me, uh, my foot almost slipped, uh, and I was almost nigh gone, uh, for I was envious at the foolish uh, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Uh, they ain't going through no storm like I'm going through. Uh, they ain't going through no hell like I'm going through. Uh, he said, I almost backslid, uh, but in verse 17, uh, he said, uh, when I came uh, into the house of the sanctuary uh, then understood I uh, look at somebody and tell them uh, all you got to do is get a revelation uh, of your situation uh, and you will understand uh, why the Lord is putting you through uh, the wicked ain't gonna make it uh, they going to a devil's hell uh, can somebody say amen uh, clap your hands and give God some praise. Look at somebody and tell them, uh, stay in the boat. Uh, stay in the sanctuary. Uh, stay obedient. Uh, stay devoted. Uh, and you will stand up uh, as a rock uh, and let the devil know uh, I am a storm survivor. Uh, clap your hands and give God some praise. Here we are now uh, in verse 25. Uh, notice here comes Jesus uh, and he's walking on the water. Uh, I got a word for somebody. Uh, if he's walking on the water, uh, that means that everything uh, that you're going through, uh, all your troubles, uh, all your problems, uh, all your pain, uh, all your heartaches, uh, all your disgusts uh, is under his feet. Uh, if he's walking on top of the wall, uh, that means your trouble is under him. Uh, and I come to tell somebody uh, that when he has the enemy uh, under his foot, uh, it don't matter uh, how much the devil uh, tries to rock your boat. Uh, no weapon uh, formed against you uh, is going to prosper. Uh, oh, clap your hands. Uh, come on and give God some praise. Thank you, sir. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, I got some witnesses uh, in the word of God. Uh, just ask Mary uh, who lost her brother Lazarus uh, ask Lazarus uh, ask the three Hebrew boys uh, that was in the fiery furnace uh, ask Daniel uh, in the lion's den uh, they all got a testimony uh, they would tell you tonight uh, I was a, in a storm uh, but thanks be unto God uh, I'm here uh, I didn't burn I wasn't consumed and I got up to tell the people of God if you hold on to God's unchanging hands you will be a storm survivor thank you I got a few more minutes notice here because there's a word for the greater Bethel you are going to be a storm survivor look back over your life he sustained you to 22 
2022. And I come to tell you that in 2023, there is a word from the law. Be of good cheer. It is I. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Be not afraid. For God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Come on, somebody. Clap your hands. Thank you. Look at this, if you will. Because now he's walking on the water. And Peter said, Lord, if it be thou, who else do you think it would be at 3, 6 o'clock in the morning? It couldn't be nobody else. Say nobody else but Jesus. Jesus, if it's you, bid me to come on the water. And the Lord sent a word. He said, come. And I come to tell somebody, when you get a rhema word from the Lord, I don't care how impossible it might look. Forget the logic. Forget the facts. Don't look at anybody else. But step out on the word of God and walk by faith and by the promise of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Peter uh, began to walk on the water. Uh, he was distracted uh, by the bolsterous winds. Uh, notice and understand this, uh, that Peter was on the water uh, just like Jesus. Uh, and the Bible said uh, he began uh, to sink. Uh, but I come to tell greater Bethel, uh, notice in the book, uh, it said begin uh, to sink. And I want to tell somebody that begin to sink is not sunk. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He began to sink, which means he was going down, but he didn't go under. Peter was going down. Uh, and before the water uh, could get into his mouth, uh, his nose, his ears, and his eyes, uh, he cried out uh, with a loud voice. Uh, he said, Lord, uh, save me. Uh, I'm wondering tonight uh, if there's anybody in the house uh, that was going down, uh, but you didn't sink. Uh, going down in surgery. Uh, going down in your finances. Uh, going down in your health. Uh, I was sinking uh, deep in sin, uh, but I didn't go under. Uh, and just like Peter, uh, I come to tell you uh, that sinking uh, don't mean sunk. Uh, I'm here, uh, and I didn't go under. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I got just a few more minutes. Uh, how much time I got? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I come to tell somebody uh, that if the boat uh, was able to testify, uh, the boat would come in here tonight uh, and testify and say, in spite of the winds that was blowing against me, in spite of the waves that was tossing and turning me, regardless of how hard the water was beating up against the boat, I'm here to tell you I didn't break. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, in spite of what all I went through, I've been been through hell. I've had trouble, but I'm here to tell you I didn't break. The devil couldn't break my spirit. The enemy couldn't break my heart. I come to tell you that the reason you're here going into 2023 is because you got a spirit that won't break you, won't tear you, won't bring you down. And because of that, uh, you're going to stand up uh, in 2023 uh, and let the devil know uh, I 
I am a storm survivor. Hallelujah. Uh, come on, touch somebody with high five. Uh, give somebody a high five. Uh, and tell them, uh, I'm a storm survivor. Uh, I'm a storm survivor. Uh, I don't deserve to be here. Uh, but my heart is fixed. Uh, my mind is made up. Uh, I'm going through. Uh, I'm going through. Uh, I'm a defiant. Uh, and look at this. Uh, because you survive. Uh, I preached a message one time. Uh, you don't look like uh, what you've been through. Uh, how many been through hell uh, and high waters? Uh, but you don't look like uh, what you've been through. Uh, like the three Hebrew boys uh, in the fiery furnace. Uh, they went in uh, and when they came out, uh, they didn't smell like smoke. Uh, their hair wasn't singed. Uh, their clothes didn't smell like smoke. Uh, uh, but I come to tell you uh, that if they could testify, uh, they would say to you, uh, as long as you sin the fire, uh, you've got to remember uh, that if Jesus uh, is in the fire with you, uh, if Jesus uh, is in the storm with you, uh, you're going to come out uh, with a testimony. Uh, you're going to come out uh, with a praise uh, because you don't look like uh, what you've been through. Tell somebody, I'm a... I'm a Storm survivor. How many storm survivors we got in the house? How many storm survivors do we have in the house? You survived 22. You're going through 23. And no weapon formed against you is going to cross. Tell your neighbor, I'm a storm survivor. I don't look like what I've been through. Because oh, even though I've been through it, tell somebody I came out. I'm coming out 22 with my heart fixed, with my mind made up. Huh? That for God I live huh? and for God I die. Uh, no matter what uh, I'm going through, uh, though he slay me, uh, yet. When I think of his goodness, what he's done for me, Think of his goodness. I down up on the tree. I can. Come on, somebody. When I think of his goodness, what he's done for me. Think of his goodness. How he set me free. I can. How long? Tell your neighbor, I'm a storm survivor. That's why I dance. That's why I dance. Think of his goodness, what it's done for me. Think of his goodness, how he died upon the tree. I can dance. Tell your neighbor, excuse me. I don't mean to step on your feet, but I survived some storms. And I got a right to dance. I got a right to praise him. I got a right to lift him up. And if you don't want to praise him, if you don't want to lift him up, I heard a preacher say, if you're going to stand up, open up your mouth and give God some. I'm a storm survivor. I survived the divorce. I survived the miscarriage. I survived COVID-19. I survived the bad health. I'm a storm survivor. In Jesus' name, amen. 
as we all stand. We survived 2022. Take somebody by the hand and say, welcome to 2023. And God is going to keep us clothed and in our right mind. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a survivor. I'm a storm survivor. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to give you praise. We just want to tell you thank you for how you protected us and how you maintained us. How you kept us clothed and in our right mind. We know that some of us shouldn't be here. Some of us shouldn't have made it. But because you send your word, because you send an anointing, because you sent deliverance, because you sent your word, gave us the go through and the wherewithal to enter into 2023 with a made up mind. We're going to be obedient. We're going to make it to the other side. With your help, by your spirit, in the name of Jesus. So keep us, Lord. Protect us from danger seen and unseen. And we'll be careful to give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Now loose those hands and give, give God some praise. As a matter of fact, go throw your arms around somebody and tell them you're holding a storm survivor. Tell them you're holding a storm survivor.